I want to create an anime opening. Well, that's how the goal started out, anyway. You know what's kind of like an animation? Perhaps maybe something that you draw that gets rigged to facial features and then moves about according to the movements of those facial features? It's an animated drawing. That's animation, right? Mm, no. All right. I'll stop with a charade. If you've watched my last video about my next steps for streaming, then you'd know that I'm talking about creating a VTuber. A virtual... well, I guess the term originally used to be used for virtual YouTuber, but it would be more accurate nowadays to say virtual content creator. A V-concrete, if you will. I feel as though that term isn't going to stick. Not as much as concrete does. Hey, got him. But yeah, as I was saying, for streaming, I'm creating a VTuber. How will they look? Who knows? But that's what I'm going to determine. So let's go on an unrelated tangent away from my main animation goal for this special goal crossover related episode of We Attempt New Things. Maybe I should retitle this video. Wait, hang on, roll the intro again. I want to create a VTuber, streaming and animation crossover project edition. This video is going to go into the design and art side of creating a VTuber, while the streaming project series will be more focused on the technical side of rigging and implementation and all that good stuff, which will probably be my next I want to stream video. With that clear, let's talk about design. In my last streaming video, when I first raised that I was going to start work on creating a VTuber, I said two things. But my design sense is not my strong suit, and designing an original character that stands out even more so. And the other thing I mentioned... It's the annoying case of, I know the principles and ideas behind creating a good design, but I'm not sure if I can pull it off. You know, things like recognizable silhouette, a strong and consistent color scheme, recognizable signifiers. I did also mention that it's not about getting the look right first go, but that doesn't mean I should go into it half-heartedly. That's why I'm dedicating a whole video, and by extension a period between drawing videos, to try to better myself in this regard. That's not to say that this doesn't serve my animation goal though, quite the opposite. More than just a single VTuber character, I have a minimum of 10 characters that I'll need to design for the animation itself. And if I struggle with just one, then imagine how difficult 10 will be. So I'm going to do something I don't normally do in these videos, break down the work of other artists. This is something that I've done a few times on stream when analyzing characters from different purposes, stuff like head shape, hairstyle, colors used, but this will be my first time not doing it off the cuff. So let's use some existing VTubers to look into those three things that I mentioned, silhouette, color scheme, and signifiers. The easiest to understand is Silhouette. For anyone who grew up with Pokemon, you know the importance of a strong Silhouette. Fill in many of Fiction's most iconic characters and you'll realize how much these strong Silhouettes have left an imprint on you. There's a reason that when we look at clouds or some random smudge on the bathroom wall, our minds will match the random marks to things that we know. So I'm going to grab a smattering of VTubers and break down their Silhouettes. And here they are. Thank goodness for the VTuber wiki. If you've had exposure to VTubers, I expect you to recognize at least two, if not three of these four silhouettes. But before I reveal who they are, let's do that analysis. Let's start on the leftmost silhouette. The first thing that both literally and figuratively sticks out are the mounds on top of the head. Then moving down to six distinct and pretty much symmetrical strands of hair, leading into what appears to be two bunches. The outline of the outfit doesn't stand out too much, aside from the items coming off the arms, then most obviously is the tail. Hard to miss that. The dress ends in ruffles, and then as a nice little touch, you can see that the socks aren't evenly matched. I know I pointed out that the outfit is plain, but let's compare it to, let's say, Goku. I'd also say that his outfit is plain. If anything, the ruffles and the items on the arms are the light touch needed to make it relatively distinct. In regards to the head, having a large enough gap between the neck and the bunches is a good choice to make them stand out more. When combined with the tail, the things in the head become recognizable as some sort of ear, which sells our first silhouette as an animal-human hybrid. Once again, it's just the slightest of gaps between the arm and the tail to help sell its shape. 
if I were to fill in those gaps you see, it's still relatively distinct, but less so than it was previously with just a handful of pixels. Alright, let's reveal our good doggo. Yes, it's Hololive's Corone. Though silhouette-wise, I was betrayed. The dress actually turns out to be a jacket. Also, although I noticed the sock, I actually missed the jacket falling off the shoulder. A smidge too subtle for me to notice with my first sweep. Alright, on to the next silhouette, though I'm going to exclude props for this one. In stark contrast to Corone's silhouette, this one is pretty much a single solid shape. This in and of itself makes it recognisable, and also fairly easy to draw. Even still, there are a few details. The once again six strands of hair, the ear looking things coming out of the head, the hands that are barely poking out from the sleeves. Then there is of course the tail, which stands out more so in this fairly symmetrical silhouette. Because this silhouette has such a strong shape to it, there isn't actually much to say aside from the obvious marine theme, so I guess we'll colour it in. Did I say stark contrast? I should have said shark contrast, because this is Hololive English's Gaugura. The shark hoodie really takes over the silhouette, but you can see why, it's definitely a look that stands out really nicely, though we'll get to that later. Third out of the four, this next silhouette has a lot more going on than the previous two, but once again, breaking down from the top, there are the two main items on the head, the horns, but also a vaguely heart-shaped hair strand sticking out from the top. The hair is nicely symmetrical, but in my opinion, a bit too busy to be memorable. While Corone has the nice clear six strands and two bunches, see, I'll do an approximation without looking at her as a reference to prove it, this silhouette has big hair. Very fluffy, a strand leaving and rejoining, a curl up here and there, and then at some point it turns into the body. Speaking of, the torso silhouette. While it starts strong with the off the shoulders look, it turns into a bit of a circle. The hands poking out the sleeves is a nice touch, but it's all just one big blob of shadow. Below the waist, things are starting to look up. Don't take that out of context. We've got some strong accessories that add a bit more character. First, and once again, a tail. Like, seriously, is it mandatory to have a tail if you're a VTuber? Then there's a strap-like thing and the chains. Finally, the legs end off in shoes that have distinct flares. Filling in the darkness, we reveal Iron Mouse, associated with V Shoujo, but who I mainly know as the gremlin that causes Sea Dog to suffer, which is always very amusing. Despite what I said about the silhouette, I think the design is good. The silhouette though, at least from the waist to neck, is a smidge too blocky without being distinct enough like Gura's. Perhaps if her arms were just a little bit higher to give a gap between the arms and the dress, that could probably make it better, at least in my very amateur opinion. Not like this is her only design as well, as Iron Mouse seems to get new models faster than I put out videos. Finally, moving on to our final silhouette, one of someone who I had no idea about before writing the script, but when browsing independent VTubers, I thought her design had an interesting silhouette. Funnily enough, she has the same hard hair thing as Iron Mouse, though it meets with yet another tail to complete the shape. But yeah, tail again, and this time a huge one. There is a good enough sense to leave a gap between the side of the head and the tail though, helping to sell its shape. The body however is just… what now? You can tell the character has very long hair because the entire shape of the outfit is obscured by the hair. It's certainly busy for lack of a better term, but it also gives the silhouette a distinct look. I also realised, perhaps a little too late, that it also gives the silhouette a distinct shape. One that I've seen scrawled on too many high school bathroom walls. So before you look again too closely, let's fill in the silhouette before this content gets flagged as inappropriate. This Netherlands based VTuber is called Shy Lily, and her 2D model has, for lack of a better term, a hoodie version as well, but I thought that it would clash with Gura, so I went without it. The head to hair plus tail combo really does end up giving her a distinct shape, I kind of dig it. With our four VTubers revealed, yes, all of the female persuasion, I probably should have put a dude in there, but oh well, I'll research dudes in my own time. It's time to look at colours. Corone, as much as I enjoy her content, probably has the weakest colour scheme of the four. Brown hair and tail, white dress, yellow jacket, dark undershirt and ruffles, highlights and detailing done with red and blue, that's six distinct colours, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it lacks an immediately recognisable colour theme. I guess as the outermost layer, if you had to pick a singular colour for Corone, it would probably be yellow, but that colour makes up less than half of her overall outfit. I do like the highlights usage though, the slight shade of cyan on the shoes is a nice touch as well, as are the bracelets in collar and red. 
Now, to really contrast where I think Corona's colouring fell short, we turn to Gura. Now, when you think, what colour represents Gura? I bet the answer took you less than a second. Blue. Obviously. The highlights are in white, and the big contrast in colour is a singular section of red. My biggest criticism is the random grey undershirt and an even more random yellow thread on top of it. I mean, seriously, it doesn't belong at all with the rest of the colour scheme. But it's small enough that I really had to look close to find it. It's ocean themed, it's distinct, and it has a very clear identity. Love it, moving on. Iron Mouse's has a bunch of colours which makes it fairly busy to look at. However, her design gets away with it by keeping the bulk of the colours in the red through to purple colour range, a quadrant of the Critic colour wheel. The highlights and off colours are done with white and black, which stands out nicely and contrast each other while making the pink to purple colours stand out even more instead of competing with the primary colour scheme. I do think the sheer number of different shades of pink and purple is a bit much, but altogether you can look at Iron Mouse's colour scheme and when faced with the question, what colour represents Iron Mouse, you can confidently say, pink. Just don't ask me which one. Shy Lily actually has quite a strong colour scheme, and I think that's due to something surprising. She actually shows the most skin. I haven't included skin tone in my colour scheme because it's just that, the skin tone. A good colour scheme, in my opinion, should work when you take the outfit off. Goku's blue and orange outfit doesn't suddenly look different because he's no longer wearing it. It stands out on its own. Because skin tone doesn't factor into the colour scheme though, showing more skin does highlight something else. Scarcity. Because there is less of it, the presence of colour stands out more. I think the colours of the hair are great. A very dark blue with silver highlights and matching a big ol' tail. Then moving on to the outfit, which is a nice rich blue with white and transparent, which codes it to white highlights. Wrapping it up, literally and figuratively, with a nice contrasting red ribbon. Now, I would say that it's a little hard to tell if Shy Lily's primary colour would be the blue of her clothes or the darker blue of her hair, but all in all, I think she carves out her own unique colour identity. Finally, we're at the end of this three-tier analysis, the signifiers. What makes the character stand out amongst its peers? When Goku, Krillin and Yamcha all wear the same outfit, how do you tell them apart? In my mind, a signifier is, removing everything else, if you just had these, you could still recognise the character. You don't need many signifiers, but you need what you have to stand out. So let's start with Korone once again. The two main signifiers are, without a doubt, tail and ears. Next I would say are the bones in her hair, and perhaps also her collar. See, if I draw a stick figure with a different hairstyle but these four features, it's still recognisable as Korone. With Gura, it's obviously the hoodie, and also her tail, but the hoodie is too large a signifier, so let's just take the two main features, the shark head with its fin hoodie parts, and the large drooling mouth with teeth. You can see how well it works as a signifier because I drew for a previous video a potato version of Gura, and it was still recognisable. With Iron Mouse, it's a little harder to say. Definitely the horns and tail once again, but I actually think the hair itself is a signifier, as much as it makes for a weak silhouette. More specifically, the two colours of her hair, or to be even more specific, the large streak of dark purple, and the heart-shaped cowlick. These features stay predominantly stable even across her different model designs and hairstyles. Finally, Shy Lily, which, surprise surprise, the tail and her fin-like hair bits that come off the side of her head. She does have another very interesting signifier though, her face and body paint, or are they supposed to be tattoos? Either way, cut her hair, change her outfit, but keep those three things, it would still be recognisable as a representation of Shy Lily. Now that we went way too long, no wonder I usually do breakdowns as part of an hour long plus stream, but I think there was definitely some valuable learnings to be had. Let's list them out explicitly. Silhouette learnings. Either commit to a strong shape or make use of gaps so that your features are recognisable. Don't try to blend the two. Don't overcomplicate. You don't need a bunch of different things hanging off or jutting out of your silhouette. Just a few simple distinctions can be enough to make a silhouette stand out. Colour learnings. If you've got more than six colours, you're doing it wrong. Remember the rule. Primary colour, highlight colour and contrast colour. A secondary colour should be in the same quadrant as your primary colour if you decide to have one. You want to be able to look at your design and its colours and quickly be able to recognise its representative colour. Signifier learnings. 
half jokingly when I say this, but have a tail or something that serves the same purpose as a tail. Less jokingly, have something on your head. Signifiers don't have to be an object or a body part. They can also be a way a color is used. Even if a signifier takes up a large part of a design, there should still be distinct parts of that signifier that by themselves are recognizable. You probably don't need more than three signifiers, and you should still be able to draw a stick figure approximation of your design with just the signifiers and still have it be recognizable. I think that just about covers it. So using those learnings, I guess I should start working on my own design and see how many of the learnings it fulfills. Maybe if I make enough progress before editing this video, I'll quickly show my progress here. Hopefully that wasn't blank because I've already written a pause into the script. Is there anything to do with character design that you think I've missed? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you're interested in seeing how I implement my own VTuber avatar, subscribe to stay notified. You should also check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash blobbitmcnugget where I'm almost certainly going to be streaming some of my design process and where you'll catch my VTuber debut. It would be great if you could come and join me. After all, it's we attempt new things, not I attempt new things. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a fruitful day.